my uh, interest kind of got grabbed a little bit here um, because I saw the ECU, the Safari ECU, and I haven't seen one of these before. I also noticed there's something a little bit different here. It seems like a whole lot thicker. I was going to ask Alan, but then I remembered Alan doesn't know anything about computers. <laughs> that's not quite true, is it? He, uh, he yeah. doesn't have an email address. No, he that. doesn't have an email address. Brent really does, so I asked him to come down and just tell me about this. What's going on? Um, so there's two things here. One is the what you call the Safari RMAX snorkel. So it's a yep. bigger four-inch snorkel. And the reason behind that is when the snorkels were all designed 20 or 25 years ago, they were all for standard... Um, ECUs or standard programming, standard exhaust, standard turbo. Yeah. But as you know, since then, everyone wants to put a turbo, an aftermarket exhaust, or a, a chip of some sort. And on we're the talking about a couple of hundred horsepower more than normal, too, aren't we? Yeah, really? yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, a lot's changed in the last 20 and 25 years when they were first yeah, all designed. Yeah. So this one's called a four inch snorkel. So what you'll find is if you fit in any of these accessories to a standard snorkel, yep. Things will be inhibited because they won't get as much air and volume that they need to. So this allows all of them to, to achieve maximum capacity. So the standard 76s, 79s, things like that, they come with the Toyota snorkel, uh, but it's nothing like this. It's nowhere near as fat. That's, that's no, where it drops that's right. four inches. Yeah, isn't and it? If, you, if you're using genuine as well, yeah. you'll see there's a cut through the middle. Yep. So they actually don't call it a snorkel, they call it an elevated air intake. <laughs> so it's really about getting cleaner air yeah. as opposed to staying out of water. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this one's made in Australia, as you know, and um, the Safari snorkel is a true snorkel. So if you go through water this height, the air intake is still nice and safe. Um, and it's designed that ca capacity to go through water and be safe. And how long has Safari been involved in ECUs? Yes, so this is a new product. So we partner with them here in uh, in Melbourne, two Melbourne-based companies. Oh. And um, it's a brand new release, only been released a couple of weeks. So what this does, the Safari, uh, Safari RMAX ECU, is it piggybacks off the original ECU. So yep. um, it means you can put in a bridging plug and it all goes back to normal. Um, but there's a couple of key features. It, it can... Um, increase the uh, the pressure, but only up to what's capacity for the vehicle. So the OE specifications that they determine what's capacity. Yeah. Don't go outside that. Um, plays a little bit with the, in regards to the, the amount of fuel or the injectors yeah. and also the boost. But the crucial thing about this and what we like about it so much and, and what makes it quite unique in the market is that the measurement of the EGTs, the exhaust, the exhaust gas, gas temperatures. temperatures yeah. yeah, because okay. that, that means it's smart. That means it can back back when things get too hot, means just engine safe, mm. and it can gradually go back to where it, where it's programmed to be uh, once things are safe again. So, so it's, I mean, th that's what got my attention straight away. It was just the sheer size of the thing compared yeah. to a little override chip or something. It's doing a, a whole lot more, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's a fair bit involved, and it's pretty pretty smart. And it's also very tailored for the vehicle. Yes. So our um, our, our parts interpreters will have a whole lot of, lot of questions to ask the, the customer before yep. it then gets programmed for them specifically and then sent to them or sent to the mechanic that's fitting it. Yep. Um, so it's specifically for that vehicle. So if you were to change something, different uh, snorkel, different exhaust system, different aftermarket turbo, we would then reprogram it and then resend it back to you. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so you can pull it out and do that, send it back. That's it, yeah. Gee, yeah. that's clever. Yeah, so it's a ripper. And with the Armax snorkel, you know it's a big, big difference. So we'll go for a drive and you can let me know what you think. I can't believe it. This is, with Safari's Melbourne-based. Drain they tailors are. Melbourne based. They are, and yeah. And you guys got together to do this. Well, look, a lot of the knowledge is with them and, and we piggyback on a lot of the specialty they do with this sort of stuff. But it is you find there's a lot of Melbourne-based and Australian-based companies that yeah. will set up in an overseas um, fall drive expo and there'll be three, four or five Australian companies. Oh, so. I know, mate. I know. I mean, the best engineering I've seen. And I, I'm having trouble saying this because I'm not a big Melbourne fan, but, <laughs> but the best engineering I've seen has been in Melbourne. Yeah, so. look, even Australia-wide, we just have the perfect yeah. conditions. You know, Toyota, they, when they do their testing, one of the Toyota engineers said there's 24 testing conditions that Land Cruiser has yes. to go through. Mm. 22 of them they can find in Australia, so um, maybe that's the reason. Well, no, I know that because I've been involved in testing vehicles for a long time, as you know, and everybody brings something to Australia at some stage. You yeah. see them out in the bush, you know, uh, they'll have a few different panels on, some different stickers, no hubcaps, whatever, mm. to try and confuse the identity. Mm. But if a model doesn't pass the Australian test, hasn't got a chance. Yeah, no, it's terrific. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go, go for a run. drive. All right.